Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Maybe I should pay attention to the video I'm making. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep myself entertained here. Uh, okay, let's get with the next video here. Uh, so we should go into our learning schedule. And we'll see the next one we're going to do is Digital Doodle. Digital Doodle. Now, Digital Doodle can turn into quite the creative uh, app. If you want to add more to it, you can change a lot of different things, kind of like I was showing you with the ball bounce last time, which I'm going to show you one thing a little different if you're trying to make it work and go, this wasn't working. I'll show you something I didn't do, and then I caught it. So let's go ahead and open up App Inventor if you haven't already. Uh, before we go into the digital doodle, I just want to show you one of the things I forgot to do when I copy and pasted ball two over and ball two over is it didn't change ball one to ball two. Again, you just click here ball two click here ball two click here ball two now they should work um i kind of missed that part so i wanted to show you that in case you're like i didn't get it some of you figured it out on your own which is cool but i just want to point that out all right let's go into a new project so i'm going to click designer now i'm going to go to start new project and today's is digital doodle underscore and then your name there we go should make a nice fresh blank page and to make sure we're ready, we might as well do it right away. Let's go ahead and download our AI companion. Let's get the QR code or let's type in the code. Let's get our tablet set up. Again, if you have your tablet, you can pause and get yours prepared. And it's kind of hard to tell once this opens up that we got a white screen. So for digital doodle, I'm gonna just be a little fun here. Change the background color to let's do gray okay now as you can see on our tablet it's gray oh it just it's got a nice look to it. it really brings out the color of my soul anyways let's move on i'm really losing it here guys all right so it's time for us to get rolling so again we want to make sure that it's not scrollable but I'm pretty sure when I look at screen down here, we have it already not scrollable. So we're all good. Our default should be not scrollable. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and add a canvas. We did this last time, so we don't need to go and read through all the directions too carefully. Drawing an animation. Add a canvas to the screen. Now on our tablet, we'll see a little white space there. We're going to want to make that a lot bigger. And let's see how big they really want us to make it here on Digital Doodle. It's going to want us to make them fill parent just like we did last time. I'm going to change it up just a little bit just to show you some different ways that we can do this. So for the height, let's use percent and let's do 90%. Okay. When we look at our tablet now, we'll see that we have the white line of the height except for down at the bottom. So this would be 10% that's not included. And I'm just doing that to show you the difference. So let's go here and let's make the, the width the same thing. Let's do 90%. Okay. So what does that do? That just gives us a little gray around the sides. Nothing really big. Just, just to show you something different and uh, how we can make things move, how we can make things work. Okay. So if you really want to change it to fill apparent, fill parent, you can. We could make the, let's make the width for sure fill parent. Let's fill the width up but we'll just leave the bottom a little bit. And why would you do that? Well, maybe you want to put some buttons or things down there. Maybe you want to put multiple colors. If you want to do that, we can add that later. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go into blocks. That's all we really needed to put there for now. So let's go to blocks. Scroll up. Blocks. There's our blank canvas. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the canvas dot dragged over and we're going to start getting prepared to be able to drag something on the canvas. Okay, so click canvas dot dragged. Next, it says get the canvas draw line. So we're going to allow to draw a line on here. So we're going to call canvas one draw line dot draw line. That's what we need. So we click on canvas. We scroll down to the action of draw line. There it is. And then we're going to go in here and it says the canvas drag event will happen over and over again very rapidly while the user drags a finger on the screen. 
Each time that dragged event is called, it will draw a small line between the previous location, previous X and previous Y of a finger. Or we can mouse over the parameters of the canvas one and drag. So basically we need to just get previous X, previous Y, current X, and current Y. And we need to make sure the X's go in the X's and the Y's go in the Y. And all my X's live in Texas. So let's go with that. So previous X, we always want where the line or where our finger just was. So we're going to do previous X, previous Y, and then current X, so we know where we're at now. It's making sure that we know the, the ordered pairs from where they were to where they are now. That's how it works. Let's say I accidentally did this, and I grabbed current X. And you're going, that doesn't look right. There's two X's. Remember, we can click here and change it to current Y. Those are all our different variables that we can choose. Okay, just trying to show you alternate ways to make things work. So now we can test it out. And that was the app. Can you believe that? That's how quick this was. Let's make sure it works. So we can drag the line wherever we are. Okay, I have no idea what this is. Just kind of drawing. Okay, and you can see it works. And that's it. But here's the annoying thing. What if I wanted to do a new picture? What if I wanted to do something different? Well, here is why we left a little bit of space. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the designer. I go to user interface, scroll this up a little bit. I want to drag a button in here. So there's two different ways we can do this. We can make it like an etch a sketch, or we could use an accelerometer. You learned how to use an accelerometer, but we're going to use a button because I just think that this will work a little better. And we're going to call this button clear button. Now over here where it says text, I'm going to hit clear canvas. And what that's telling us is that whenever we click that button, we're going to clear the canvas. I'm going to make the font 20. Okay, so on our tablet, we can see we have a button here that says clear canvas. So how's that going to work? Well, let's say we have stuff all over the screen like that, and we want to go ahead and clear it. If I click it, it doesn't do anything because I haven't given it any behaviors yet. So I'm going to go into blocks, and we're going to go here to the clear button. And when clicked, when we clear the button, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to clear the canvas background. Okay, so in the background right now, we have all these squiggly lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to canvas. I'm going to scroll down to where we have our actions here. And we're going to want to get rid of the background. Okay, let's get rid of the background image. So what we want to do is we want to get the background image, whatever we just drew on it. We want it to get back to nothing. So here's where we can go to text box, grab a clear empty box, and when we use the clear empty box, what that will do is it will say we want to clear the screen to have absolutely nothing. So if I go back to the screen where I had my, my scratches now, I can hit clear canvas. And now I'm done. Now I've been able to find a way to clear this. Now, if this looks like a fun app, and I think it is because there's a lot of fun things and things we can add to it. If you go to your um, PDF file that we had here in the Learning Center for Digital Doodle, there's another link here for PaintPot. PaintPot allows you to have different colors, add different things, uh, maybe add photographs, stuff like that. Um, and when, the, when we get into our PLTW uh, activities, we're going to have this as well. But you can click on the paint pot tutorial and try this. This will allow you to do fun things like this. Add pictures, add buttons for different colors. Have fun with it. If you want to add this stuff on here as well and then send it to me, go ahead. I'd love it. If all you want to do is just do this programming that I just showed you with this, I'm okay with that as well. That is A-OK -okay with me. All right. But if you want to go above and beyond and, and have a little fun with it, go ahead and do so. You have nothing else you're doing right now. You might as well have some fun with this. And show them to your friends. Show them to your family. Show them the cool things you're doing because this is a cool class. And if you have a tablet, have fun showing it off to them. 
Okay, that's all I got for you. We're getting through these. You're doing a great job. We got one more app that we're going to create using some of the content we've already learned to create a magic eight ball. All right, see you next time.